Okay, so if you are wanting to follow along again, go to Google Webs or the Google Chrome Store, Cami, and click Add to Chrome. And then once you have the Cami app or the Cami extension, it's going to be here. It's this little blue K, and it links with your Google account. So once you have it set up, um, it's very easy to go in. Mine's already kind of set to keep me signed in, but you will just be able to pick like um, to link it with your Google. So there's different ways that you can create an assignment. I usually make my worksheets or my readings um, in Google Drive and then I put them in Cami. So that's probably what I would do. So I would say open from Google Drive and then it will ask for your Google account. And then it opens up your drive. And from there, you know, you search whatever document it is that you would like to use. So I think I wanted to do, this is a good example of how I could use it. So I could pick this. Um, this is a reading log to go with a little reader that I'm considering using. Um, and I would be able to integrate the four skill areas into kind of one extended assignment. So once I'm in, I have my document here. It looks pretty much the same as I had it in Google Drive. And there's a lot of cool things that I can do with it. So I can um, do comments, which is probably one of my favorite aspects. Both you and the students can leave text comments that pop off to the side like that, that can be replied to. You can leave voice comments, which like yesterday, I don't remember what I was doing here, but yesterday I left some sort of voice comment. Please read chapter one and complete. Yeah, so I left a voice comment for the students, maybe instructions, especially if you have kids who struggle with reading, um, that could be good. But for teaching a foreign language or for teaching, um, you know, your EL learners, you could also do it for, um, for listening proficiency. You could record yourself saying, sentences and then they would write them down or you could have them summarize what you said um, that has a lot of different applications and then video if you want to make a video comment one word of caution is it starts filming basically as soon as you click so i make a video comment here and you see it's recording me so i could leave a video comment to my students just checking in with them, or I could do, again, listening comprehension. I could give them tips or reminders. I could have them leave video comments because everything that we can do here, they can also do as far as I have seen. So you could have them leave videos. That was really nice during distance learning. Um, I had my students do voice comments uh, to practice their pronunciation, but also I had them speak some in English to talk about their reading strategies and it was so nice to hear them because <laughs> mine were very shy during Zoom. So it was very good to be able to kind of connect with them that way. Sarah, are you using the free version or a paid version? Am I using a free version or the paid version? Let's see. Education license. Lisa, do you know the answer to that? I mean, I would not have paid for it, but I'm not it sure. Is, it is paid for by the county, and okay. it is something that we're going to pay for for next year as well. When you sign into Cami, you're going to have to sign in with your 5 and 3 at WCPS or Google Single Sign-On. And you'll see up in the left-hand corner, it will say Cami Teacher EDU. Um, and that lets you know that it is paid for, so you get everything with it. Okay, great. And then all the features work with the students because I was doing the free version. I didn't know. Yes. Now on the iPads, you're going to notice that you can't integrate it with Google Classroom. So you can give them the link in Google Classroom. You just can't have that, like Sarah was saying, going back and forth with Google Classroom where, uh, but they, they can use it because Smithsburg High School has used it a lot. Um, if you know anybody from Smithsburg High School, I would get in contact with them. They've used it a lot. 
Um, Sarah Jawalski uh, and her team, they did a lot of PD on CAMI. Uh, BISPA and North High have used a lot of CAMI as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm following along and um, doing the same things as you're doing, uh, Sarah. And yeah. it asks the school name and the zip code. And when you pick the teacher uh, with the school um, email, as you said, you're there. It didn't ask anything, you know, about money or. Um, no. And, and you could just do the single sign in through Google. If you're signed into your five and three, like your Google account, just click the single sign on next time. I mean, you don't have to fill out all of that. Okay. Is the number of licenses for this um, limited? Do you know, or is it something that we can all? Yeah. Everybody has a license for it within the county. We're paying by pay as you go. So it's by usage. Um, so every year it will bump up, but we found it to be very useful, especially um, in the Chromebook schools. So it is something that we hope to continue to use um, because of, of exactly what Sarah's showing you. It is a power horse. Um, you can use it on your MacBook, um, on the iPad and the Chromebooks. Yes. So we can go back, look at a few more features. Um, the comments, again, are excellent. Now, if you want students to write, like actually type out a good bit, then they can insert a text box. So like here, I have the question, um, and my students can just type their answers here, okay? And then it's like when you're, you know, you're typing in a word processing, you can do different sizes and colors and everything. Um, so that's pretty straightforward with the text boxes. Ooh, there we go. And equation, I mean, I'm a t Spanish teacher, so I haven't messed around much with equations, but you can insert symbols the way you would in, um, you know, Google Docs or in Microsoft Word. So you could do that. That's there. Now the drawing. Yeah, I and, it, and it works. <laughs> Yeah, the symbols work very much like the equation editor. Mm -hmm. All right, so drawing. Um, this is like anything where they're kind of quote unquote drawing on their computers. It's not gonna be super neat and accurate most of the time, but you know, they can have all different colors and different, um, different lengths of the stroke. And it's super easy to erase. And something that I think is kind of cool is you can have them, like here I'm gonna have the students um, insert a picture to show the setting of the story. So you can just click right there and it opens Google or you can open Google Drive or you can open your files in your device. So like I could type that and then click, select, insert, drop. Um, and you can add multiple pictures and then, you know, you can use your drawing to maybe label things. So if you wanted your students to label like parts of a diagram or if you inserted photos and you want them to um, write about them, then this is definitely useful. Oh, man. Where's the next thing that I wanted to show us? Oh yeah, I had thought here, um, this would be an example of how to use the um, video feature. So I sometimes give like these quick listening quizzes. My kids really like them. Um, so they write exactly what they hear. And then on the second line, they decide if it's true or false. And I can just give the quiz right here. So it doesn't matter if the kid misses my Zoom or misses my class, um, you know, or if they need extended time and they want to be able to hear it a couple times if I'm willing to, you know, give that accommodation, then this is super powerful. And what's nice is you can have it all within one doc. It's not that they have a recording and then they have a doc that they're writing in and then they have something else that has the, you know, link to some other activity in it. It's just very nice how it's all together. Okay, so that's kind of the features that are within the toolbar there. Now, let's say I wanted to assign this. Now for Chromebooks, very easy. I can just click create assignment 
And then it kind of looks like your typical Google Classroom. So I might send it to that class. I don't know, I'll just give it a title, okay. And I can pick, make a copy, share one copy, or cannot edit. So a question yesterday was, could you have the students collaborate the way we do sometimes with shared Google Docs? Um, what you would need to do is probably um, pick the share one copy and then send it to certain students, however you wanted to do that. And once the assignment is in Google Classroom, you're also able to add links to it. For some reason in the Cami menu right here, you can't. But once you're in Google Classroom, let's see if I can show. Once you're in Google Classroom, the assignment looks pretty much the same as your other assignments. So you could attach links to other videos or to Quizlets or to, you know, practice websites. Anything like that would be fine. There was one that I did kind of recently. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, so this is what it could look like once it's in Google Classroom. Um, you'll have a link and it will say via Cami, and then um, the students would be able to just click into it and they'll click um, like open with Cami. There'll be a drop down menu. Sometimes we'll see, you know, open with Google Docs or open with Google Slides, whatever. There'll be an option to open with Cami. And it's very, very easy for the students to get in. Okay. So any questions about kind of the basic setup? Yeah, that went pretty fast. So do the students need to have it on their iPad or whatever they're using? They have to have an app as well. Yes. Okay. And because I had a few kids that would tell me that it wouldn't give them the option to go into Cami. And I was able to use GoGuardian, um, which is also great if you get Chromebooks, to kind of snoop around on their screens and help them find how to get the extension. It seemed as though some of them had, maybe, Lisa, I'm not totally sure about this. It seemed like a lot of our students just sort of automatically had it, and then a few I had to kind of go in and help them add. Would you be able to speak to that at all? Yeah, so for the Chromebooks, the extension was added to their uh, Chromebooks. Mm -hmm. um, for some students that may have removed it, they can always go back in the Chrome store and bring it in, because some did remove it. Mm -hmm. And then uh, for the iPads, they don't need the app. They can go, there's three different ways you can go to Cami it, through the app, uh, which you can um, you put on your MacBook, but you don't need to. And you can also go to just camiapp.com and it's a cloud-based version. It looks exactly the same. And the only reason you would really need the extension is if you are doing from Chromebook to Chromebook, then you do need the extension. Okay. All right, so now another very cool feature that I like um, that I think pretty much any subject area could use is you can do what's called split and merge, which basically you can um, take split and merge. You can take various PDFs and then you can take only the pages that you want. So for example, I had you know, bought various things on Teachers Pay Teachers that were in PDF form, but in the past I would not wanna send them to the students because you know, the answer key would be attached and I didn't wanna give them the answer key. So this lets you, um, this lets you add and take away things. So maybe I have this little reading log, but I also want to add in, I don't know, let's, let's see. I might wanna add in something from the Realidades Practice Workbook. That might take me a long time to find. I'll just put a random sheet in. Okay, so I might wanna put something like this in. Okay, next. 
So I have now the stuff from both documents here and I can decide, all right, I would like them to do only this page and this page. And now I have a whole new PDF. If I click export, this is now a new worksheet. So um, for example, with my student, one of them was on packets and I just use this split and merge to combine a bunch of different um, like reading and verb sheets that, you know, I had assembled <laughs> through Teachers Pay Teachers or from other people who had given it to me in PDF form. Instead of having to take screenshots or having to send, um, you know, really detailed instructions to my administrators, like first print this page and then attach this page, this is the order I want it. I was able to just very easily put things in the order that were correct um, and combine different resources. So that's definitely helpful for the distance learning. Um, but also it's helpful for sending kids things. Um, you know, sometimes the kids will lose papers and then they come looking for their makeup work two months later. And you know, might not have that paper printed out this is a very easy way that you can send um, documents to kids. And then, you know, they, I did actually a good bit of the marking period recovery, quote unquote, I did a good bit of that using Cami. It also has an OCR reader. So you can take any PDF, like, you know, she said she has PDFs. If somebody gave Sarah a PDF that was just a, uh, uh, an image and it had words on it, but that image won't read it for the student because it's just a picture. It will actually take that picture and turn it into something that a reader can read and it will read all the words on it for her. So like if she had this image right now that's on her screen and it was an image, it would turn it into something that could be read for the student. Nice. That's very cool. Um, Oh, and another feature, the text-to-speech. This might be helpful. I think it's pretty robotic sounding, um, and it only works in English. But this might be helpful to students who are English learners or who struggle with reading. Um, again, it's kind of robotic. But if a student really struggles, it just may be for help with the instructions, that kind of thing. You can just click text-to-speech and then click where you want to start. Insert pictures and label in Spanish. The basic setting and main characters of the So, eh, that still seems to be a work in progress. But for some people, that might be applicable. Uh, the dictionary is in English, but again, for English learners, that might be helpful. Uh, so, for example, I could click five dictionary. you know, or insert. All right, oh, got chat. I have a question. All right. When you open up the definition of the words, can you still highlight then text-to-speech? Can they read with that feature? Hmm, let's see what happens. I don't know. Chapter. No, it looks like you can't. It looks like if it goes out, I think if you click the text to speech, then it will take it out of the dictionary mode based on what I'm seeing here. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And can students look up any word they want to using the dictionary, or are there certain words um, that you can limit? It only works in English, okay. I think. Oh. So let me see. Nombre. Yeah, so it really only works in English okay. so far. Um, so you wouldn't have to worry about them using it to cheat in Spanish um, if you were concerned, you know, if you're given a quiz or something and you don't want them to look up words, you wouldn't need to worry about that. Oh, and markup, I forgot, markup, you can highlight text. So maybe you wanted them to highlight, um, you know, cognates, or you want them to highlight main ideas. And because they can do different colors of highlighting, I mean, they could highlight multiple, um, you know, multiple different things. 
So real quick, where was my link? I'll just show you some of the things that my students did. Um, I've continued learning since we ended distance learning. So the stuff that I did with my students was fairly basic, but this was kind of the real applications of it. So in Spanish one, they did an activity with Vivir Mi Vida by Mark Anthony. And I gave a comment here as kind of a little intro. And then this girl used the highlighter and she used the um, draw feature. Some of the kids typed. And then down here, she also did her little doodles. So that was nice because again, it was a PDF. So I didn't have any way to convert that easily to any other way to send it to them. Um, and this way they didn't have to like print it or anything. So there was the song lyrics. Um, this one was kind of funny. I was having trouble with my students um, using their verbs correctly. And I wanted to make sure they were ready for level two because um, some of the teachers in my building give like um, quizzes at the beginning about the verbs. And I wanted to make sure that my students were prepared and they seemed to struggle a little bit with knowing which ending was which. So in the Zoom, um, I showed them the pictures and they sent me chats with different ideas for sentences. And then kind of together as a class, we made these. So I used it also as kind of a whiteboard. Um, and then I saved it and I attached it as an example. So that was kind of cool that, you know, you can make something together and then save it. And then let's see. Oh yeah, here was an example of a student um, who used the video feature or the um, voice recording. She actually used quite a few different things on here. So she color coded because they were supposed to label which animal was which. And there's so many different nice options for colors that that was easy. She used the highlighter because she was finding different types of verbs. And then she left me a text comment and she left a couple of audio comments. And it's a little glitchy right at the beginning, but then it's fine. Esta era una subspecie de la zebra común. Se diferencia de esta so it's pretty decent, um, pretty decent quality. Now some of the kids got a little confused and they had to kind of troubleshoot a bit with the comments. So occasionally I got some empty comments. You know, I could tell that they had clicked it, gotten confused, and then they just left the comment. They forgot to delete the comments. So, you know, it, it is a learning curve for them a little bit, but overall it's pretty simple. Chair for a minute. So, any other questions or comments based on what we've just seen here? Any ways that you think you could possibly apply that? And Sarah, in the chat, I was only able to, I'm on my phone right now, mm -hmm. I was only able to send you um, the PD module for Cami to you, but if you want to give it to everybody in the chat or link it on your presenters page, you can do uh, that. Okay, yeah, I can do that. Let me, uh, yeah, I'll probably put that on the presenters page. Thank you. It's not wanting to let me, uh, it's not wanting to let me send it in the chat. I don't know why, but yeah, I'll figure it out. Let's see, share. Um, yeah, I'll put it on the presenters page. I've used audio comments on Google Classroom. Mm -hmm. and I'm excited about the fact that kids will be able to use the audio for speaking practice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's really nice because I think it kind of simplifies things um, so that you don't have to have so many different, you know, links open or so many different activities in Google Classroom, 
because I know personally I was trying to help my niece with her Google Classroom work, and she's only in second grade. And I found myself very overwhelmed by her Google Classroom because there were so many different calendar announcements, do this exit ticket, on this day, click this Zoom link, on this day, click into this link, but there was also other links, you know. So it really does help to kind of streamline things. But also I think in the classroom, not necessarily during distance learning, just in general. Um, it could be, this could be a good tool because I can imagine like, for example, in my Spanish one class, I could put half the class for one day working on their reading log in Kami and using, you know, their headphones. And then the other half of the class, I could work with them on speaking, you know, or work on tutoring, something like that. So it, it really does give, I think, a lot of good different features all within one one extension. Did you have any problems with like any glitches with students submitting things or it not going through? Um, I did not. Now, I had maybe after all the troubleshooting, I had maybe like one or two kids who were still having issues out of, you know, 80 that were attempting to do it. So I'm sure that there would be a few glitches, but I didn't see anything like work being deleted or, you know, any major problems like that. And because I wasn't physically with the students, even the kids who were having trouble, I'm not sure how well they were following my instructions to get in. You know, it's harder when you're not there to see exactly what they're doing. Um, and some of them might have even been trying to do things not on their Chromebook because a lot of the kids were using their phones or their parents' computers, you know. So overall, it seems like it worked pretty well, though. There weren't that many glitches. Well, I'm just really excited to see all of the different features, Sarah. So thanks for doing the walkthrough. And I think um, it would be great like to open up options for the students too. Like they can prove their comprehension to you in so many different ways. So maybe sometimes we could direct that and other times leave it open to them to show us um, what they know. And I think that's really cool. That's why I liked doing the voice comment because I had them, the reason I had them do the voice comment was they were supposed to pick one of the animals on that worksheet, one of the um, paragraphs, and I had them read it out loud, but they were also supposed to kind of tell me what they understood. And I, by hearing them say it, you know, I was able to differentiate between the ones that really had figured it out on their own and really had just tried to do some sort of like translate, you know, because they would have to say, well, I figured it out this way because I used this keyword, something like that. So it really does, I think, give us a lot of different ways to show the comprehension. Any ideas, Paula, for how this could be used with EL? Uh, just the same features. I think it's really awesome too that it has the dictionary feature um, and the text to speech. That's a really big accommodation that our students get. So that's fantastic. I, I, this is this is wonderful. I love it. Yeah, and one thing that's nice with the split and merge is, for example, if they have an online textbook or something like that. This would be for anybody, but especially, I know some of our ELs. If they have an online textbook or book, you could send them short versions, maybe you could only take a certain part of a chapter, um, you know, something like that. I think it could help for, you know, accommodations. Yeah, even your literacy-based strategy, that last thing that you showed, um, even though it was in Spanish, you know, where the student was uh, color coding stuff, mm -hmm. that would be really, really helpful for them to use a liter. We do more literacy-based approaches in EL, so that, that would also be very useful to highlight the word, draw a picture, um, it looks like it gives lots of great opportunities to show what students know, 
with limiting the language as well. So it could be very useful for our newcomers, but then you can take that away for the kids who have more experienced language um, and they, they can, you can write more. So pretty cool. Yeah, the EL uh, teachers at North High, I know that they use it as well during this distance learning time. Um, and it, it was very useful for them. Um, so you might want to reach out to them and see how they look at it. Something else, um, I had to do my tuition reimbursement for one of my grad classes. And I took the PDF from the board, put it into Cami, did my um, text boxes, signed my signature with the right feature, and exported it. I mean, it can actually be used for things even other than school. So like school, you know, you can just use it for general editing of PDFs. So I definitely think it's something that is probably here to stay. Well, I came today because I had talked to uh, teachers at a couple of high schools who felt that this was a really good tool during distance learning, uh, especially uh, you mentioned BISFA and um, so I wanted to learn how to use it so that I can help the students. I'm really excited to try the feature where there's the one copy for students and you could like group them and whenever they're collaborating or doing a project, they don't all have to be on there at the same time, but they can get, leave those videos and those uh -huh. recordings. So I think that's really gonna change that would be very whether we're face to face or, or doing the distance learning again. So yeah, thanks again, Sarah, for, for walking us through. All right, awesome. So were there any more questions? Not a question, but a comment based on what o o Aubrey just said. Um, they can even peer check and respond. Mm -hmm. and yeah, and, and respond either in writing or speaking. Mm -hmm. I was just thinking that since we just had our CFIP meeting this morning as the EL team, that could be also another way to um, encourage students to speak. And good using technology. Um, maybe for giving, this might apply even more with ELs, but maybe if you have a student who's doing a paper for, like maybe they're writing a paper, you could leave a video comment of you kind of explaining edits for them to make, because that for a lot of kids would be much easier to process and kind of more friendly than you just making comments on a Google Doc. So I think there definitely are a lot of a lot of different ways we could use it. I I have a question about um, notifications. Um, do you know what notifications look like to students when when we provide them feedback on on a Cami doc? Hmm. I'm not sure because I would always leave feedback and then in the Google Classroom assignment, because I usually leave a comment, you know, once it's graded, I just would say, see my comments in Cami. So I don't know if they got a notification from Cami or if they just knew from the Google Classroom comment. So I'm yeah, not I think, sure. I think when they open up the Cami assignment again, um, or, you know, if you do something in Cami, it will attach it as another PDF for them in Google Classroom, and then they'll be able to see it. Okay. Nice. It would be nice. What would be really nice is if they couldn't see their grade until they listened to your comments or read your comments and then it opened up their grade for them after the fact. <laughs> um, I don't know how one would do that. <laughs> oh, I know. Interesting though, because I would sometimes get a little frustrated because I use it as a chance to comment on their pronunciation. You know, and I would think, all right, these people better be listening to or reading my feedback because I'm spending a lot of time giving feedback if there is a way to force them to do that. I don't know. But I did have some kids like message me back in Google Classroom and say, oh, yeah, you're right. I forgot about that or I'll make that change in the future. So. Thank you. Anything, Lainey, would you be able to use this? I know you have younger kids now, but would you be able to use this with them? 
I think it would be great. I like the, I think they're going to like being able to play around with different things. Of course, I mean, they don't really do too much online without the parents' help. I feel that it's pretty user-friendly. Um, it just depends on what device it really works with and if the parents are going to have devices that are really compatible to be able to use the features with the kids in the home. For Lainey, do you see it more as an opportunity to you, for you to use the video or the audio features and maybe leave a message in Spanish with directions on what to do? Or just that in general, if teachers are pushing out things like, like the, to be able to chunk and pick out just what's really critical and maybe doing that video, providing in that extra scaffolding, extra support um, with video or giving it so many options, your child can respond using this, using this, using this, using that. And then being able to communicate back and forth would be great. Laney, I just thought of something that might be cool for the kids um, is if you had the word in Spanish and then they could click and listen to it and how it's pronounced and then they have to draw it. Like I know kids that age love to draw. So. I was wondering too, like what Sarah was saying in the end about like the tuition reimbursement, so many different forms that parents ask me to take a look at or help with how maybe WCPS could use that with signatures. I'm thinking registrations and transportation requests and all of those different things, or even if the signatures aren't legit via CAMI, but being able to video walk the parents through the different forms. Here's how you submit a change of transportation request, and here's where your signature needs to go. Yes, actually, Peggy, uh, Dr. Pugh, she saw CAMI and how to use it with signatures, and in the PD module, it shows you how to do it. Um, Jody Burkhardt had me and every other teacher that was doing M MSDE courses. We had to sign every sheet for students taking the MSDE course, and I just used Cami and did my signature and then sent her the PDFs back all at once. And it was very slick and it worked really well, and it saved my um, signature. So every time I clicked on it, it just brought it in, and then I moved it down to where it was supposed to be. And then I said, I, I went ahead and downloaded it and went to the next one. Um, so, yes, I think it would be very nice for parents. Lisa, I'm going to add on to that, um, and I'm thinking about Sonia over at the International Welcome Center. Um, we're still doing virtual enrollments over there with some very limited face-to-face -face stuff. Um, so I would be very curious to see how community members could possibly use it, because there's so much paperwork involved that they have to present and so many things to sign. So I see Sonia really being able to use this, but I'd love to see how maybe parents could use it when they're filling out forms and everything as well too. That's a good point. And Paul, if you need like, um, me to, you know, go ahead and talk with her or show it to her, I can do that. And then we can see, I can check with Cami how we can make sure parents can access it as well if they don't use their student's account. Yeah. I'm also seeing a, a new uh, parent resource being made by us, Lisa. <laughs> and that's okay. We can do that. Yeah. No, I'm just saying it would be great to collaborate with you again on that. <laughs> yes. Because Sonia could be doing all the instructions in Spanish to show the parents how to use it as well. So thanks everybody for your patience as we talk about non-instructional things, but my mind is racing now with different applications and different ways to use this, not just with teachers and students. Um, Lisa, I'm trying to share the, um, the PDF uh, that you sent me or the docs that you sent me with the um, PD module. And it says I'm a viewer and can't share. So you can't link it onto your presenters page. Yeah, it said get link, but it said that I couldn't share it. it like oh. it gave me a link, but I'm not sure that the link will take them anywhere because it says ask owner to share, you're a viewer and can't share. Okay, well, let me check real quick and I'll see if it's something, because with all those changes they made with the share thing for the mm -hmm. share button, 
um, it, it could be doing that. I could also link it in for you. Okay, either way. Oh wait, request edit. I just requested access. Okay, so it should have sent you or whoever is the owner of the document um, some in the uh, request. I got it. I'm working on it now. All right. So if we don't have any other questions, then we can, I guess, go ahead and end the session. Thank you for coming. I hope everybody finds a way to apply this in whatever situation you're in. I also want to say thank you to everybody for being here. I am very impressed with the turnout. It's the last day of PD on a Friday afternoon. You guys are the real diehards. So thank you for being here. And thank you, uh, Sarah, for presenting and sharing this. This is great. Thank you, Sarah. Thank yeah, you, Sarah. It's great, Sarah. Thanks. Thanks. I'm not going to stop recording until everybody said that it was great. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it was fantastic. So useful. That's where we will.